let's get this perfect. Hello and you're very welcome to the JMA Podcast. I'm John Wan. Of course, the podcast brought to you by Orgrats.com. You can the JMA Podcast get 15% off on the website. We are into the hammer time in the championship, so get yourself organised on Orgrats.com. And tonight, I'm joined by GA Sports Tracker app owner Kevin Kennedy, a Gaelic statsman, Mr. Matthew Hurley, and former Arma and Crossbow Gale footballer Johnny Mortis to talk about last weekend's championship action and, of course, this weekend's championship action. Ulster final and Leinster final action to look forward to this weekend so really look forward to chatting to the lads tonight it's a big welcome back to johnny murta to the podcast johnny how are you i'm good john thanks very much for asking yeah doing well and keeping busy as always and, and looking forward to a big weekend yes what have you been what have you been at since we haven't seen you oh sure you know me i've been busy and i'm working very hard you know so and uh, my lovely wife's keeping me busy I would imagine so. Marriage life is joyous, joyous for everyone. Kev Kennedy will testify to that. Mr. Hurley, how are you? Yeah, all good, John. Can't complain. Sun's out, as we said, off air there. And um, the summer's nearly, well, the summer is here, I suppose. We are in May. So, uh, so yeah, it's a uh, great weather. And um, hopefully we'll last uh, throughout the championship season. And obviously the group draws we made as well. So lots to look forward to this summer. Hmm, absolutely, absolutely. Mr. Kennedy, how are you, son? Yes, all good, boys. All good. Um, the thing that what Matthew says there, a lot to look forward to. There's a lot to look forward to in such a short period of time. Uh, but it is May. We should have this all wrapped up by about the second week in July or so. So, busy few weeks ahead for everybody. Good stuff. Did you have a good weekend? I did. I seem to be raining up this other side of the border, you know. Once the we, we tend to, or RTE tend to cut our heads off whenever it comes to sharing the sun. But, uh, no, got up to the caravan this weekend, only back today. So, a bit busted, but um, back to work tomorrow. Jesus, Johnny, he's going rough. He's in a caravan now. What have we done to this man? <laughs> I, I, he's talking about a bit of bother there, so I didn't know he was over in England. <laughs> <laughs> the water, the water. <laughs> oh, good stuff, good stuff. I suppose before we crack right into the action, Johnny Murta, it is Ulster final week. Uh, of course, it's Donegal against Antrim in the Ulster final this Sunday. In Clonus, they're both competing for the anglo Celt title. Arma are aiming for the first Ulster title in 2008 and Donegal are there once again in an Ulster final. Are you looking forward to Sunday, my man? Yeah, I was a bit shocked there when you said Antrim and, and, <laughs> and I didn't know where to look, but I think you just got, just just give Kevy a wee bit of hope there. But um, Did I say Antrim? Oh, Jesus, yeah, sorry. I got excited there. Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> look, I suppose, um, I suppose we've never really seen the draw. It was... You know, we expected Armagh to be in an Ulster final. There's no point in saying. Um, and we've got there for the second year in a row now. It'd be interesting to see what we're going to learn, John, from particularly from last year and from the dress rehearsal, I suppose, in Crow Park for the league final. So, Donny Gall's come through a couple of couple of big games. They've played the stiff test. And um, listen, we're, we're, we're delighted to be there. But like I said, Probably expected to be in an Ulster final. It's 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 going to see what we're going to do after that. Yeah, I suppose what is uh, the build up like so far down in Armagh, Johnny? Obviously, no tickets were available to buy online. I think they're all distri- distributed through clubs and county boards, so on and so forth. I suppose it was probably hence T to a degree. Yeah, well, I don't think that there doesn't seem to be really any issue with clubs now. To be honest, in getting tickets or. Well, bar a stand ticket, I think the other kind of definitely. But um, I think come you know this week, it's it's still early enough days. I think towards the end of the league, uh, the end of the week, I, I suspect maybe Ticketmaster will release a few tickets. Anything has been handed back, but I imagine it's going to be a serious, serious crowd. Added, and Armagh is going to bring a serious crowd, and and I imagine Donny Gall with with. Uh, with Jim McGuinness back at the helm, they're going to they're going to have a serious crowd as well. So it's it's going to be a massive day, by all accounts. The weather is going to be the sun's going to be out. It's going to be nineteen or twenty degrees. Couldn't beat it for Clonus. It's, it's going to be it's going to be hell bent on a, on a massive game and, and hopefully it arrives. Clonus warm summer's summer's day, Johnny. In fairness, and I know years ago they're talking about getting rid of the Ulster final out of Clonus, but my God, it would have been a ridiculously bad decision. Yeah, well, look at it. I think. They we're talking about getting rid of the beer garden in Clonus. I don't know about the Russell <laughs> final. But, um, but look, there's no doubt about it. And, and it's probably stating as well, it's a, it's a serious arena for football when there's a good crowd in it and, and, and that there. But 
it'll be something to be talked about down the line if, if Caseman can get going. It'll be a massive, massive thing as well to bring an Ulster final back to Caseman as well. So, especially a new Caseman, just we'd love to see it in, in Ulster. It'll be fantastic. There we talk about Caseman, Mr. Kevy. <laughs> I was just thinking there, um, we had the Irish Cup final up here, Cliftonville and Linfield at the weekend. And I was watching it just in the background on Saturday. And they had 14,500 Windsor Park or so, absolutely so out. Biggest crowd that uh, the Irish League has got in 45 years or 50 years or so like that. And we bemoan having 10 or 12,000 at a GA match. It just shows you the size of GA um, in the north here. You know, it, it's it's fantastic. Um, will will Casement Park be the answer to Antrim's problems? No, but it will be a beacon. If, it, if and when it is built, it'll be brilliant to host. And Ulster final into it because it'd be a full house and it'd be a great atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Good stuff, lads. Big weekend to look forward to then. So I suppose we we'll crack into the action that took place yesterday in the Connacht Senior Football Championship final between Galway and Mayo in Pierce Stadium. It was Galway 16 points, Mayo 15 points. A very good win for Galway in the end. Obviously, Mr. 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 Finney coming up at the end, uh, good with the end. The goalie was it was a great kick at the end to win it, and obviously nerves of steel. And obviously, Pork Joyce said the man goes through probably gets a lot of criticism from, criticism from Galway supporters, but he's probably wrote a lot of wrongs after a great kick to win Galway another Connacht title. The old enemy Galway Mayo did look like they had the game at times at the end, but Galway Shane Walsh made a huge impact on that second half. Mr. Hurley, your thoughts on this game yesterday? I think Galway deserved to win. The base team won on the um I think they were they were uh, by far better at uh, shooting and uh, I think a kick outs, especially in the last uh, few minutes. I thought that Galway stood up when counted. And a lot of Mayo fans would um go on about the last minute free. It wasn't the free um the Connor Gleason's winner. But when you look at it, Galway should have had two advantages in the second half alone. Uh, when they brought out a soap, Daniel O'Flaherty, and the other one where uh, David Goff gave a hot hot ball. And in the first half as well, there was a third one, Keen Darcy running straight through and goal with the ref called it back as well. So Galway got their fair share of uh, um, wrong decisions uh, being given against them, but they ended up winning, brilliant win in the end. And when you look, actually, they took 23 shots yesterday. They scored 16, 69%, which is absolutely brilliant from a Galway point of view. And they took the right options at the right times, whereas Mayo, um, they, they had a shooting accuracy of 53%, but probably the... the, the the moment with it, which epitomised Mayo's day, Connor Gleeson loses the ball within, I'd say, the 45 metre line. Ryan O'Donnell who robs him, but instead of playing the ball into Matthew Ruan, who's on the run, he decides to go for it himself. And he might have been watching Derry and Donegal, but at the same time, it was just the wrong option to do at that point. And even the Killian O'Connor effort at the end, it was just rushed, so rushed. And Mayo, I think Galway they deserved in the end. I think Galway were the much better team on the day, deserved to win the game. And then, um, and yeah, when you look at Robert Finnerty, the performance from him was absolutely exceptional. 89% um, of his shots went over the bar yesterday. He took nine shots, converted eight. He's now the top scorer for playing the championship as it stands with 1-9. So he's having a marvellous year, converted to him, at 132 overall across the league and championship. So I, I will say Galway are getting their players back into contention at the right time now. Even Matthew Tierney coming back in now. Um, off the bench, Damien Comer in a full forward added a focal point there for Galway. And Galway, every time they spotted him in the full forward line, they were getting the ball straight to him. Shane Walsh had a serious impact coming on yesterday. Um, three shots, three points. Um, you had other players like Keane Darcy. I know he didn't score as much, but definitely contributed. Paul Conroy did very well. And even in the defence, Dylan McHugh had an outstanding game. And Jacqueline, similarly, a cornerback. Um, you look at Conor Gleeson and goal, uh, obviously part Joyce mentioned it, he got a lot of hate online and things like that, not just from Galway fans, but outside the county as well. And he shut up a lot of doubters with them two brilliant frees at the end. So I will say all good days work for Galway. They will be a threat um, later in the summer now. And they're peaking kind of, they, they weren't peaking the league, but they, they kind of wore last season. They were in the league, then the championship, in the Connacht championship. But I think they're starting to peak at the right time now, Galway. Like, They'd be a serious threat come um, the summertime. I know they have Derry in two weeks, and that'll be a tough game for them nonetheless. But you'd have to expect them to get out of the group involving Westmead. And who knows uh, after that? I think Galway could be serious contenders for an all-out quarterfinal and potentially even an all-out semi-final. 
Yeah, and obviously matching the performance of Damien Comer was just remarkable and he really was the leading light for Galway Trout and he's just a colossus of a man. And obviously we did talk about obviously Shane Walsh's impact when he did come on the second half. Damien Comer obviously injured a lot throughout the league as well and probably played with injuries throughout his career, it has to be said. But my God, he was remarkably uh, good yesterday. He was superb. And what I will say about um, Galway, just spotting him in the full forward line each and every time when Paul Conroy got the ball and Keen Darcy got the ball, all that was on their mind was going straight at the Damien Comer. And you see it in the goal chance yesterday where he spun the man, brilliant save by Colin Reap, to be fair to him. But like every time he nearly got the ball, he went for goal. And he was absolutely brilliant uh, throughout the game. He took a few brilliant points. He made David McBride's life a nightmare in the first half in particular. He was absolutely dominating him from pillar to post. And what I would say, yes, Damien Comer is outstanding and probably the best Galway forward along with Finnerty on the day. But what I noticed about Galway yesterday, they, every time they nearly got the ball in front of goal, they went for the juggler. And what they had about two or three goal chances yesterday. Mayo didn't. That, that was the main thing about them. It was kind of a thing for Mayo. I thought they were way too predictable. Like every time Ryan O'Donoghue nearly got the ball, he was going to put it over the bar or kick it from the same position each and every time. Tommy Conroy didn't get enough of the ball near enough. Ain't no shape. It was busted out of it, which is, you know, very... Um, Unusual sight to see from Aitno Shea. Like, he's usually a very good, uh, colossal player in the full forward line, but he just got none of the ball yesterday. Kendall O'Connor didn't that much when he came on. I know he got a nice score, but didn't do much. But for Galway, I think with Comer back, with Walsh back, with Finnerty right on form, with Matthew Tierney back at the team, they're going to be a serious threat later in the summer. And Comer especially, brilliant performance yesterday. And there's more to add from this guy because when you look at the kind of championship overall, he came out of the second half against Sligo and kicked two points, saving Galway's bacon in that game. And he produced another good performance in this one. So he deserves all the praise. He had an absolutely brilliant game, brilliant two games, not just one. And what a performance from Damien Comer. He's well and truly back. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, Mr. Kennedy, your thoughts on this game yesterday? And obviously, you were bagging the money. You'd be more worried about Mayo than you would be than Galway. And that prediction back in January came true, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, John, came true. Um, I suppose I say if I've broken clocks, I'll write at least twice a day anyway. So, um, <laughs> it's probably no great insight into my mind. Um, I think that day back in January. The stats just didn't add up that Galway were as bad as what it looked like. I know they were beat by eight points by Mayo that day, but they they were only beaten by four scores. And Matthew's already touched on now the difference in the percentage conversion from 70% down to 53%. And that was what happened on the day. If you're going to hit a conversion rate to 53%, you need to be hitting 30 shots. You, know, you need to be hitting 30 shots. So it just came a wee bit shy on that. Um, I thought the game itself was a pretty poor game for most of it in terms of the, the, the quality of it. However, I liked a lot of the individual displays from a defensive point of view. Some hands in, some wonderful tackles, particularly in the first half. Um, boys coming through, and there was a, a few nice no fouls committed, um, a few interceptions that were made. But, you know, what was it, 20 minutes in, and the game is 2-3. Um, so it probably shows you the quality of the first half. But I suppose a final is a wee bit nervy. It takes 15, 10, 15 minutes for a team to get embedded into it. But I think that, you know, for the, the stick that the Galway players and team and management have got over the last couple of months. You could see the relief, more than relief in Paul Joyce's face, you know, whenever that final whistle went, the, the photograph of him standing, giving off um, to the high heavens, thanking God for the result. The, I think it means a lot to Podrick and his team. They managed to stay in Division 1 this year with the skeleton of a team. He came out towards the end of the league and says, like, we have been circling big time. Shane Walsh took an awful lot of stick the other week. Um, again, the injury must be severe enough that even whenever he was on the pitch, he wasn't allowed to hit the freeze. You know, I think Eamon Fitzmaurice commented on it during the commentary to say whatever type of uh, injury it is, it's obviously still bothering him that he can't go and hit those freeze because any other day he would have, there would have been bread and butter for him. So for him to come on and even get three points, I think was was brilliant as well. I think from Mayo's point of view, look, it's. Mayo, as Matthew's touched on there, they're predictable in what they do. They still miss somebody out the left hand side or out the right hand side who can cut in and score. Using Matthew's image yesterday again, two shots out on the right hand side, two shots and 28 shots on the right hand side tells the story in itself. They're definitely missing um, someone with a left foot up in there who is confident in shooting. They're very confident in shooting from the left, cutting in, shooting onto the right, um, the right foot. But they're clearly very one dimensional in their play. Again, 
looking at the numbers, there's improvement in them. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Mayo came through the group and got into the quarterfinal. I wouldn't be surprised about that at all. However, I do think that Connick football probably isn't in the best of places. I think any Ulster team, even Tyrone, possibly with Bar Monaghan, that every Ulster team is above them at the minute, who is still in contention for Sam McGuire. And if Galway and Mayo do come through, I just feel that they're that the Connick football is not in a good place at the minute and it will come back to bite them later on in the championship. Lots of ponder there, Johnny. Yeah, um, probably agree with a lot of what the lads have said. Um, definitely the game, the game took an awful long time to sort of erupt the, like a, a Connick final. It was Halter Skelter in the second half, but it wasn't really Halter Skelter really in the first and it, Sort of a lot of shadow boxing, I thought, and a lot of, a lot of dipping their toe in the water and sort of see what happens. And you know, the boys have touched on a lot of players. I, I, I actually thought the goal of full forward line was absolutely excellent. I thought Damian Como, he looked sharp, he looked hungry, he looked, you know, he didn't seem to be any niggles and eyeing him. He was busy. He was, he was everywhere. He was coming out to the, even out to the forty-five, winning ball out in the sideline, winning ball. Um, you know, Rob Finley, absolutely unbelievable game. I thought he was excellent as well. His finishing was top class, you know. But in saying that, you know, Mayo weren't a million mile away. You know, they were, they were they got themselves in a winning position, like they've done time and time again, coming up to to seventy minutes and didn't see it out. You know, uh, probably question for me. I probably thought that. That maybe Mayo missed a trick and probably the matchups with Como was wrong. I thought um I thought they got that wrong. You know, I thought even the subs they brought on, you know, well, okay, Killian O'Connor. But Killian can get you a score, but they lacked something off the bench as well. They lacked a wee bit a wee bit more to kick on. Um slightly disagree with Matthew in the fact that I thought I thought Time was over by a minute and, you know, Killian O'Connor had a chance of throwing a boot at it. There was a couple of times in championship games where we've seen the ball recycled back across and tried to work something or looking for a free and the referee just ends up blowing it up. Luckily, he threw a boot at it. It went wide outside the boot. It was good enough effort. At least it went dead, you know, but I still think goal was full value for the win. I think the best team won. Um, as Kev alluded to there, this is... This is something we've a pattern that we've seen with Mayo on that right side, and this is coming back to haunt them big time. And I would question the longevity of 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 Mayo now when they go down this stretch and into quarter. If they're going to get near a quarter final or semi final, the real good teams is going to punish, especially when you can't do anything on that side, and they will punish you. They they will overload on the other side and push you down, and you know it, it could come back to haunt them now. Mayo, Mayo is a serious football and county, and I wouldn't write them off either. They're, <clears throat> we've seen this from them before, and like a swallow doesn't make a summer in Galway. I was delighted for PJ because after Everton and, and the stick they've took on a big week for them, I was delighted to see him win it. But I think what's that three in a row for them? Mm. You know, they're going to need to push on as well if they're going to go anywhere. So it's it's a big scalp to take and, and he and he was absolutely over the moon with the win. Um but look, lads, really and truly, the big days are really just getting started. So it's gonna be interesting. I don't know it's probably a wee bit unfair, Kev, to probably say that, that a lot of Ulster is like a few teams in Ulster have them like it's still really not in the play for Mayo's in a in a in a good enough group and I fancy their chances of getting out of it. You know, to be honest, so I think there's a lot to play for yet, and there's going to be some of these games. It's going to be a disaster. There's no doubt about it. And some of them's going to be dead rubbers, and some of them's going to be the hour the hour. But it'll be interesting to see come quarter final. And one thing about Mayo and Crow Park, I don't think you'd be writing them off that quick. Mr. Kennedy. No, look here. It's it is what it is. I, I think you know there wasn't. 
Mayo underperformed just we talked about Matthew touched on the stats about conversion rates and stuff like that. And there was only a point in it. So Johnny's, you know, hundred percent right. There wasn't night and day between these two teams. There was a point in it, you know. But I just feel that having, you know, throughout the leagues, you look at even the scores, take um take the Armand down game out of it. Um you take maybe Armand against Fermat in the first round, Donegal, Derry, Donegal Tyrone, you know, Cavan, Monaghan. You look at the amount of the the speed on which the games played at in Ulster, and the amount of shots that the games played hitting in Ulster. Now, and that brings me into my you know call that Mayo or that comic football is not in a great place. The average hit up until yesterday for a man um a comic game was around about twenty eight scores. You know, in Ulster it was about thirty eight. You know that just shows you the intensity that teams in Ulster are playing with. And, you know, Crook Park's a different beast. There's probably no, outside of Dublin and Kerry, Mayo are the team who know how to play in Crook Park. They've, they've put in serious performances there in the past. Some of them only for a half of football in most cases, which was unfortunate, but they know how to play in Crook Park. And if they get through the group stages, which they more likely will because they're still a good team, um, I can't see them progressing beyond either the quarterfinal or semifinal stage. I can't see them getting a Dublin, a Kerry, a Derry, um, even an Armagh, and if Galway were to meet them in Croke Park, I think Mayo would outscore Gal- Galway. I think um, Galway wouldn't be great at playing in Croke Park unless they got Shane Walsh fully back fit. Just, just a point, Kevin, back to you. Um, one, one good thing that Galway is very, very good at is turnover and score. Galway is very good at turnovers. And Galway, Galway can hit you hard after a turnover. And I think that happened a good few times yesterday when Mayo got caught. You know, that intensity Mayo was probably missing in the, in the defence as well. Like I said, I thought the matchup with Como was wrong. There's a few wee tweaks there. And Gold would then have a lot to do to win that game too yesterday. So, yeah. you know, it, it, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Look, Crow Park's a different animal. Um, but they still, have the, they still have a couple of good forwards and you know what to do with Aidan O'Shea as well. Uh, I think his best days is past him. I, I I don't think he'd be starting Aidan O'Shea now. To be honest, when when it does come down the stretch here, and as for Shane Walsh, we spoke about it actually on <laughs> in our group there a couple of weeks ago. I thought the carry on was going on with Shane Walsh. I thought it was on a podcast. I thought it was absolute disgrace. I thought it was a joke. It was a, it was like a real laughing season to me. The big stuff hadn't even started yet. He came off the bench yesterday. He kicked his three points. A man not fully fit. He's done his job, and he's and he's got his another another conic title in his arse pocket. So Shane Walsh for me, boys, I'd be happy enough for you, Shane Walsh to tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those were totally on call for. Like you know, he's played Cra- what crazy at the comments. very most a full game. Like at the very most, all seen he's played a full game. Comments. So crazy. make those comments as much. Crazy comments to make. I think it was a Mike Mark uh, Mike Mike Martin on I think it was at the Backdoor GA podcast, and I think it was literally just him saying that like you know Shane was taking pictures before the London game, and he had his sunglasses on, and he was doing this and he's doing that, and I just think the, the I keep harsh about, and I've been saying in this podcast for years. I think this these personal attacks on our players is playing the game at the minute, and you know the the online abuse they're on, the, the players aren't getting paid, and we heard Conor Gleeson and Pork Joyce standing up for Conor Gleeson after the game yesterday. I just think the personal attacks on players at the minute. Is really below the belt, and I suppose uh, Mr. Kennedy used highlight on Twitter there this morning. If we were to go by what people say on Twitter and so forth, so on so forth, social media platforms and various podcasts, the game would be in a way worse place, Mr. Johnny Murta. Yeah, it definitely would. But tell you, if I was Shane Walsh I, uh, on the Monday Club this morning, the, the sunglasses would have been on, and the point of video, and he would have got, he would have got the he would have got the picture up in them. And thanks very much, son. That's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Mike, Mike Martin, Mike Martin, penny for your thoughts, penny, penny, penny for your thoughts, uh, the former, the former Galway footballer, I'm still yet to figure out who he is. Well, any so, other hey, talk- hey Jim, Jimmy is a former Galway footballer, or a male footballer, so there's, there's one in each camp, so they're happy, you know. Jimmy, Jimmy Sloan, or Sloan, whatever, you know, whatever way you call him. Any more thoughts on yes to men, or are we happy enough? Happy enough. Good, good, good win. Good win. And Galway look like they're back now, in fairness. It has to be said after all the criticism. Munster Senior Football Championship Final Action, lads. It was Clare against Kerry. It was Kerry 23 points. 
Clare one thirteen in Ennis. Good win for Kerry. A lot of people saying probably not one of Kerry's better performances, even though they did rack up the big score. It had to be said, David Clifford getting four points. Um, I suppose job done, box ticked as Emmett Smar said on the Sunday game, but probably not a game of the ages. In fairness, though, a very, very good spirited performance for Claire, Mr. Johnny Murray. Yeah, look at um, I thought it was a good game, it was an enjoyable game. I really enjoyed it. I thought Claire, Claire's movement, they were so direct, they were they brought a lot to the table. Probably fair to say, um, the carry looked a wee bit lackluster, definitely in defense, they're standoffish a wee bit. You know, they're overzealous sometimes. You know, the boys that weren't standoffish were overzealous. Paul Murphy, you know, left a wee bit on, on a couple of players. You know, a couple of couple of things like that. But uh, Kerry, Kerry defence looked to be in second gear, um, to be honest. You know, I think people were probably more like John, that maybe Kerry didn't win the game by 15 points or something. You know, stuff like this. But I, I thought... I thought Claire was excellent. Claire, you know, um, full, McMahon, very, very busy. Got loads of good scores. Um, it's in us. It's in us. It is, yeah. <laughs> Emmett, Emmett McMahon, no relation. But anyway, um, had, a, had, a, had a big, big influence on the game. Um, you know, but, but lads, Jesus, Sean O'Shea in that full forward line, I think maybe got eight or nine points and, and, I think five frees or whatever it was, but him and Clifford and Paulie Clifford chipped in with a couple and, you know, a right for Kerry man was just kicking points, you know, whenever they wanted to. They were sort of, they seemed to me, yes, they're happy enough to kick points um, and not really go for the juggler too many times. They're happy enough to keep the scoreboard ticking. Um, they looked... Look, they looked a wee bit going through the motions at times too and they looked the team was doing a wee bit of heavy training. But that's that's no disrespect to Claire. Just, I thought Claire sometimes, you know, when the game did fire up and I, I thought Claire gave the ball away cheaply a couple of times and stuff like this. And, and it's, what you, it's what you'd expect with a Division 3 team playing Division 1 team and, and a cup. And once that ball got turned over, John, it was moved so quick. Party Clifford played a lovely couple of balls into David in, inside, and there was a mark, and there was there was another one. Um, Joe Tuck on the run, and handy scores. You know, they just punish it very, very quick, and and that's the difference. The key teams like Dublin and Kerry, that's they'll hurt you hard on a turnover, and they'll move the ball so quick. Um, foregone conclusion, I suppose, but it was. I was I was delighted for Clare. I thought mm. Clare put up a serious game and they did they did well and I tell you they're they are direct and they're they're a team that could cause some teams bother as well as Clare. Um so it was a good it was a reasonably good game, I thought. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a really good spirit of Clare performance, I'm not it. And in fairness, they did make Ennis an absolute fortress, Mr. Hurley. It did in fairness, and uh, I'm not looking forward to, uh, to Cork going there in two weeks' time. Really not, um, because Clare might have a point to prove uh, going go, go up against Cork and uh, things like that. But that, that, this performance against Kerry, I agree with Johnny, was absolutely brilliant from a Clare point of view. They were very direct. Their forwards were moving really, really well. Aim at McMahon, as, he, as Johnny mentioned, there was absolutely superb. And um, Aaron Griffin as well. Uh, we've been watching him in close detail throughout the league campaign um, and the championship campaign this year. He scored 114 from play in Division 3. He's added seven points from play in two games. That's 121 from play across the league and championship. The guy's on form, and he is definitely one to watch in the three uh, group games in the All-Ireland series. And not only the forwards, I think Brian McNamara was really good at midfield. I thought there was a lot of drive in him. He's, he was under 20 last year for Clare, so uh, definitely rising up to the senior ranks there. A guy that deserves a lot of credit, actually, from the Clare full back line, uh, Manus Doherty. He was tasked for going on David Clifford. Kept him relatively quiet. Uh, Clifford only scored two points from play, so fair play to Manus for that, and he's definitely a defender to watch. Uh, Stephen Ryan and Gold had a very good game as well. So did um, Ronan Lanigan, the other cornerback, Ike Mugawaru, who got that brilliant goal um, near the end and was full of running throughout the game. And what was impressive for Clare, and like Galway, they went for the juggler quite a lot. Um, especially at the early stage of the second half Brian Matt Lamar just wins a free he goes straight down to carry defence and nearly gets a goal off brilliant save by Shane Murphy Iki Mugawara gets a goal himself I think um, 
I think the centre forward, Dermot Coughlin, had a chance in the first half as well. And he was impressive all day, to be fair to him. Nice intricate passes uh, between himself and Emmett McMahon all day long. So really good positives to take from uh, the Clare team. From a Kerry point of view, look, I, I think there's still more in them. Like the teams with Kerry, it's just a weird thing. Look at themselves last season in particular. They performed really, really poorly in the group stages of the All-Ireland. They lost to Mayo. They probably should have lost to Cork. And then once they get to Crow Park against Tyrone, bang, they're there. And I think Kerry, they could be saving something for Crow Park. I just think there's something in this Kerry team. I, I think the group stages should be easy enough for them. Monaghan, Meads, Loud. I think they should beat them with relative ease, all three of those sides. They'll get to a quarterfinal and then that's when they'll start to click. But I think Kerry need, and I agree with Johnny completely, Kerry need to sort out their full back line. Are they in second gear? It's hard enough to see. Jason Foley being back at full back is a huge boost to them. Um, like the, like the, the concern for Kerry point of view was the two goals they conceded in the Munster Championship, the Paul Walsh goal and the Ikemogawara goal, were straight down the middle for the Kerry defence. And Jack O'Connor will not like that, especially Paddy Talley as well. He won't like to see um, players from Division 2 and Division 3 teams running straight through the heart of the defence like that. So it's something that Kerry need to fix as well. I wonder as well, will Barry Dan O'Sullivan come into midfield? Dermot O'Connor and Joe O'Connor have done well enough in the league and they've been plodding along nicely in the championship to an extent. But if Barry Dan comes in, will he change the aspect of that midfield? Paddy Clifford had a decent enough game yesterday. Sean O'Shea was really, really good. Tony Brosnan, I was really impressed with him in the forward, scored three points from play and was well able to take a score as well. He's always had potential for Dr. Crokes or for Kerry in general. So delighted to see him um, kick the lights out as well. So I still think there's potential in Kerry and I still think there's a potential for the, the click in Crow Park. For Clare, they'll be eyeing two weeks' time against Cork. If they they'll be they'll be thinking this is the game we need to win because in the the next game after that is Tyrone and Oma. And Tyrone might not be going along nicely as they would have hoped, but the game's in Oma. And that'll be a fortress for Tyrone and be a very hard game for Clare. And a neutral venue against the Ulster champions, Armagh Donegal. So you'd imagine Clare would lose that game as well. So all roads lead to, for Clare to two weeks' time against Cork. And um, definitely looking forward to that game. Should be a good one. Very competitive. One thing to start popping into my head after the last game, that's the Galway Mayo game. Just touched briefly on this, and I know we don't like <coughs> single out kind of referees, and it's a tough job, and obviously he at the moment and stuff. But uh, Mr. Kennedy, just brief thoughts on David Goss' performance towards the closing stages of that game yesterday. He's made, he's made his calls. It is what it is. Don't blame the referee. Blame Group Park GA for not giving that man enough support. The same thing happens um, in the hurling the weekend. You see for the Waterford um, goal. Referees are there. They're going to make mistakes, whatever it might be. They need someone there to give them a hand. I would never criticize a referee. Um, you know, whenever a, a keeper makes a mistake, he's the worst in the world. But there's other fourteen other men in the team to support him. Maybe twenty men in the team to support him from that way. But like, I I don't think it's ever right to give off two referees or complain about referees when they're standing in the middle of that pitch by themselves. Although they're surrounded by other officials, you've got two lanes men there. You've got um the fourth official and you've got four umpires, all qualified referees. Give them more hand without criticism. Mm, dubious calls at the end, though. That's what said, Johnny. Yeah, a couple of dubious calls at the end. A couple of funny decisions. Seen a couple of crazy things on on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, and Mayo fans or let's say all sorts of pictures and stuff. And I thought I thought it was very disingenuous. I thought I thought, I thought looking over the whole game, the whole game, that he made a couple of mistakes either way. And as as Matthew alluded to there when you were talking about the game, he made he made a mistake for the substitution. You know, he made a he made a mistake for giving a, a quick free was taken as well. You know, there was a couple, you know, okay, Mayo come down the stretch and whatever happened at that stage, they felt like poor Mayo again, but I don't I think over the course of the game it was probably fifty fifty or down near that I don't think it was really anything to be writing home about. Um, probably should have left Aidan Aidan O'Shea on the field a wee bit longer I think David's a big fan but look it it is what it is Absolutely absolutely Claire Cor or Claire (laughs) Claire Kerry Mr Kennedy (laughs) Um, Yeah I think uh, Matthew's touch I thought Coughlin had a great game you know what is he's only a young lad and some of the scores he's taken were absolutely fantastic he took a score actually at the right hand side 
it was you know a great crew park on Ireland final day anytime. Um, but yeah, what what a, what a carry have you seen by um Paulie Clifford lifting up the, the the trophy yesterday? You know, carry are in a no win no lose situation or, or sorry a no win situation because if they didn't win by fifteen points, they're not all Ireland contenders. They only conceded fourteen scores despite the fact that they, they are division three. Clare have Clare lost what seven starting players from last year's championship to the start of the league this year. And what they have done, you know, a bit of a bumpy start at the start of the league. I think they lost the first three games, but they went on a bit of a run and you know they performed with credit throughout the rest of the league. Kerry have nothing to worry about at this stage. We can't measure Kerry and where they are at this stage. You know, conceding 14 scores. Yes, they looked up at the back. It was Crowley's first game back. Rihanna Buckley's also first game in a wee way. And we came on as a, a sub last time. As Kerry, I, I'm looking at the Irish news here now, and the the, the title is Kingdom Ready for Real Action, says O'Connor. Pre season's over. Now they have to do a bit of work for the championship, and that's what they'll be working on. They'll come through the group stages, get to Crow Park. Carry our different piece in Crow Park. A bit like Dublin, they play their games in to, to peak in Crow Park, nothing else. Can I, can I just make a point? And I, sorry, John. I want to let the boys actually want to hear them speaking about that game first. And this is like. We, he, he, Kev is a million percent right. But you imagine the scenario now that O'Connor's in. He has Shawnee O'Shea who kicked nine points in the full forward line. And he's gonna to have to take him out of there. When he gets to the business he is he gets to the business end of things, he has to take that man out of there. And the simple reason why is he has to go back to eleven. And he goes back to eleven, he takes pressure off your midfield. His turnovers, his work rate, his orchestration there in, 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 in that middle third. And this is where Kerry, I thought, missed a trick yesterday. And what they don't, it, like, okay, players back and everything else. But Gavin White at times looked to be in no man's land. Absolutely no man's land. And some of the Kerry, the Kerry back line was the same. I, I, I thought yesterday Kerry had a serious problem with the plus one. And whenever Claire went direct at them, either the midfielder wasn't dropping in and freeing up that plus one and seeing what's going on, they just look to be a wee bit all over the place. And whenever you bring Sean O'Shea back to 11, that changes all that. You sort out your midfield, you sort out your middle third, your intensity around that middle third was through the roof again. So you, you're going to have a scenario now where you're taking a man of that calibre out of that full forward line, and it's going to happen. I don't know if it will. I'm not sure. I'm not saying it shouldn't. I think that the year that they did win the All Ireland, um, O'Shea played as almost like a full team eleven, and it was a link between the back line and also Clifford in there. But if you go back, Johnny, last year the All Ireland final, the build up to it was all about David Clifford and this run out to the left hand side that totally exposed Derry and Chrissy McCaig in the semi final. Clifford didn't get as much easy ball at the left hand side because Dublin brought a sweeper back in. Just because he says, "You sit here." If he has Shawnee O'Shea in beside him. Sean O'Shea goes out the right then. That's a question for Dublin. They try and get two sweepers in there at times. And I think that's why they will try and hold off and keep Sean O'Shea in there. And hope that the likes of, you know, um, likes of uh, Tony Brosnan, the likes of Moynihan, in, they start to do a bit more work around about that half forward link. Still I, think I, I think that's a re- I think, you know, I think he's, I actually think, I don't know what it is. I mean, I watched him in the Ireland final last year and I thought he was man of the match for long. But also, as you really touched on, is off the ball stuff is unreal. The fella covers some amount of grass that you wouldn't oh. see on TV. Unreal. And the amount of criticism he got after the game, he scored, what, not five um, in the Iron final last year, but he was involved in almost every single piece of play. But I think he is a, a threat. I John, I had him for my bet of the week for Man of the Match. I, you know, obviously, whoever was giving the Man of the Match out yesterday didn't, didn't bet on himself. But nine points in um, a monster final, not the Man of the Match, is pretty impressive. Tony but, Brosnan. Tony, Tony, Tony Brosnan. Brosnan. And, you know, it, it's good because it's always... David Clifford, and it's always Johnny O'Shea. Change it up, yeah. Yeah, and it's good to carry and get that. They Johnny's right. They do need something else in there. They do need to strengthen that up. Their plus one at the back will is an issue, but it can be fixed in time. But I think that they're playing the long game of keeping Johnny O'Shea in there to give potentially double on the headache that they just don't have David Clifford to worry about because let's face it, the Ireland final last year, that's what their biggest worry was, that, that exposure to the left-hand side for Clifford to run out to. Happy enough. Yep. 
yeah. Good stuff, lads. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I suppose we will move on to action this weekend in the big stuff. Well, one big stuff out of two in bad. The Ulster Senior Football Championship Final. It's Armagh and Donegal in Clonus. And of course, the game is at 4 pm and will be live on the BBC and RTE. So, really look forward to this game. At the weekend, of course, we are touching briefly on it at the start. Mr. Johnny Murphy, really looking forward to this one on Sunday. Weather permitting, it should be a belter. Oh, it's, it's be a belter, surely. Um, are you going, John? Fingers crossed, if you can get me a ticket. Jeez, one of my ticket master. <laughs> um, yeah, look at it. Some really master. Looking, oh, the Masters, looking, this year. Yeah, yeah. Really looking forward to it. Um, look at it, it's... it's like I spoke just before, just just as we were coming on air, there it's um it's expected to be an Ulster final. We are where we are, you know. Listen, we're going to see now where we're at. We're going to know exactly now where we're at. We're going to see probably um I probably felt we probably should have done a marker again, done goal. We didn't do it in in the last game of the league. Um, felt we when we had done goal in the other grounds. Probably felt we should have put down a marker there and see where we're at. We didn't. You know, Crow Park was what it was with a couple of boys out with weren't well that week and one or two surprises um had to start the game. Um there was a bit of a bug in the camp and look at that's fine. Um but Donny Gold's got stronger since as well. McHugh's back. Um they brought a couple of boys now fit to bring McBrady off the bench. You know, serious talent. You know, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how Jim does put out a 15 now the weekend. And and what's he going to do? You know, is he going to set up like Down did? I thought, you know, I didn't get on last week, but I thought Conor Lavery done a serious job. Serious, serious job. And he had it to an absolute T into, into frustrating Armagh, slowing the game down. You know, what was he going to do? Was he going to go out and go toe-to-toe and... Look what happened the year before. You know, that wasn't going to happen. I thought he got it spot on. Um, you know, Rain at midfield, I think, has given us a whole other uh, dimension in there as long as he stays there. Um, but for me, John, I'd love to see our man in the first 15 minutes go at, just really go at Donegal, really put on a high press, really ask a question and see where that takes you. You know, I think if we turn into this, sit back a wee bit and be a wee bit conservative, and Donegal is going to do the same. We're going to play into their hands. They're real good ball carriers. They're very, very good at building from the back. You know, I think if we turn into that sort of game, like the way like the way Down was, Donegal's a lot better than Down. Donegal will have that game over. You know, and they'll have us at arm's length. Whereas I feel if Armagh go a wee bit in the front foot. We have the players to do so. We have the bench to do so. I want to see us be aggressive at it, you know, rootless at it, and I want to see us go on and do it. Fucking, you know, Rain, excuse me, Rain midfield. Mackin's having an excellent game at six, so he has been all year. You know, he looks tailor-made there. You know, probably like to see Greg McKay, McKay back in there as well. He had a bit of a niggle. He, he was... He, he, he missed the last game and that there. Um, hopefully he's back in the full training and, and he's been excellent all year for Armagh as well. He's been playing that zone defence. Absolutely top class. Understands the game inside out. So if we can get him back on the field, it'd be a massive boost for Armagh. Um, young Connolly has done well this year. Peter McGrain's been excellent this year. You know, do you think there's more in, in probably Rory... Has, has had some massive games for us this year and is it some ones where he's been a wee bit quiet but his work rate is absolutely excellent you know so with him and Falker I want to see them have massive massive games here you know um, listen I, I do fancy us there's no point in saying I, I'm confident I think we can beat Donegal I do think it's going to be tight and I do think that Armagh is going to get a wee bit a wee bit of something after the way they finished that game with down. You know, in, in previous, the last couple of years, them sort of games have got away from us. And whether that be an extra time or that be a penalties or whatever, whatever which way it is, it's got away from us. We showed character. We showed a wee bit of 
a wee bit of battle, I thought, and a wee bit more maturity to, to, to the boys. Um, and like I said, the bench, we have a bench now. We have guys that can come on and take a score. We had three guys come on the last day and kick three points. Excellent return, you know. So that's going to be needed again. There's no point in saying in, in a hot day in Clona. So I'm really looking forward to it, John. But we're going to know exactly where we're at after Sunday. We're going to know exactly where we're at. It beckons, my man. It beckons, Mr. Kennedy, your thoughts ahead of this, <clears throat> ahead of this weekend's Ulster Senior Football Championship final. Yeah, just to echo what Johnny says there, I think Johnny's spot on with his, um, his sort of position in terms of what Arma need to do. You know, this will be the fourth time these two teams have met since January. All right, the Mechanic Cup was nothing, but uh, in the league, it looked like Arma were sitting in second gear and almost playing with Donegal. They both came away with a draw that day in the Croke Park in the league final. You kind of wrote the script that Arma just need to stay with them in the last 10 minutes or to kick on. They did that. They outscored them between the 55th minute and the 70th minute by uh, five points to nil. And then I think they hit the post twice and one drop short and Donegal got the field and get a score from it. And that gets Donegal back in front again. And you, I don't think you can play that game. Johnny's touched on there. I don't think you can run with that risk because our stats always, I, I pointed to that Donegal are a bit of a kamikaze. They shoot from here, there and everywhere. They'll try to get 30 shots in a game. Again, I do think Jim McGinnis has a, a stop clock on the players. I think like you need to get a, a shot off within 90 seconds here. That's the type of, and that's from the day they play at Cork in the first league game. They have the volume of sh shots they take is unreal. Armagh, on the other hand, don't. Armagh tend to be a lot more conservative in their shots, but with greater accuracy. And whenever it comes into a game like this, if Armagh drop their accuracy one bit, and they don't increase their shot count, they're in trouble. If they can see the goal, they're in trouble because the minute Armagh need 70% conversion just to match Donegal's 50%. And that mightn't sound like an awful lot, but whenever it's coming down the lane, it's it's the point or two that makes a difference. Now. I would love to see uh, both O'Neill starting. I'd like to see Rian in midfield. I'd also like to see Oshin in there instead of playing uh, Jarry Oak up in the corner. I'd like to see a night to night full forward fed in there for that first 15 minutes. Where there is a wee bit of chaos because Jim McGinnis will be targeting that first 15 minutes to be like a greyhound out of the traps. You know, he'll be targeting that to say, let's get our noses in front and let's frustrate Armagh. Let's get them down the lane and let's see who can have a shootout in the last couple of minutes to get there. If Armagh can do what they did in Fermanagh, do a high, aggressive press, um, try and turn Donegal over in their own half, which are more than capable of doing it. Again, they've done it in Croke Park and it worked for them. But I would like to see O'Neill in their... Um, Oshin and Eileen, I think that he would be a surprise package to actually start for Armagh, but Donegal wouldn't be expecting him to start. I think that the Johnny again touched on it. You know, Mar where they are, we could have predicted this would have happened. They were five to two fav five to two joint favourites with the bookies after the draw, simply because of the way they fell in the draw. You know, they beat Fermanagh and they beat Down, but they would have learned a lot from Down, particularly the second goal that they conceded and how that came about. Caelan Mooney. You know, the cornerback who's like Lightning, he made a break for it in front of the ball and they completely outrun Arma. That's a good insight to what way Donegal are going to play. Donegal are going to try and play an outrun, a, a game that will outrun Arma because they are quicker than Arma. They've more, Arma had the physical says and the presence there. Donegal would be a bit more nimble um, and a bit more sort of quicker at getting forward, especially in their numbers. But that's a good lesson for Geezer and uh, Donaghy and you know the boys in there to say, look, here's how we can see what do we need to work on here for the next two weeks? And if they can work on a plan to slow Armagh down every bit, I don't think they'll reduce Armagh's scores. Or Sorry, I don't think they will reduce the amount of scores that Donegal are hitting. I think Donegal will still get their 28 to 30 shots off. But if Armagh can increase their amount of shots and get it up near 26, 28, I think Armagh win the game. Donegal, Donegal conceded 32 shots against Derry. That tells me that their back lanes are to be got it. Against Derry, they were outscored in terms of their total scores. What was it? 15 to 17. The goals killed Derry that day. Derry had been written off in terms of their performance that day. But our, our, Don, everything went right for Donegal that day in terms of their performance. And if was, this was Donegal meeting Arma, I think we'd be talking about a lot closer game than what we are. I, I think that Arma are kind of waking in at the minute. They're some of the bookies' second favourites. You know, I think they're Odds, odds against or whatever it is, um, 11 to 8 to go in. So they're underdogs. But, but that suits Armagh because soft and Armagh don't live up to the, the name tag of hot favours and things like that. So I think Armagh are well-primed. 
Absolutely, Mr. Hurley. You have a take up on Kevin's right there about um, Armand's shooting accuracy. It was really, really good against them um, down in particular, 65%. And Downs was 44%. And if Donegal are going to get up to 50 in, in that case and scenario, Donegal would have avoid, well, take it, um, replace Donegal um, instead of down here. Down scored 2 6. And if Donegal got up to 9 out of 18, they would have got 2 7 or 3 6. So that's a troubling sign for Armagh. Look at that. I think that is definitely. But what I will say about Armagh in the semi final, in particular against Down, they did show that they have improved in going into the last few minutes of games. Because how many times have we seen Armagh, especially in the game last year in the other quarter final against Monaghan, where they they didn't time it right? They didn't time it right, and they eventually went to penalties and lost the game. They passed the ball around, I'd say, for about four, um, around three, four minutes uh, for Jason Duffy's score. They got the ball to the right man. They put it over the bar. And Down barely didn't have time to get up in the end to get an equalizing score. I just think Armagh are kind of turning a corner in regards to that. I, I do think Johnny Gall are going in as favourites in this game because of the aura that Jim McGuinness has, because of the goal-scoring ability as shown by the game against Derry. Darrow Wheel has scored two goals in the championship so far. He scored, I think, a third or two in the league. He's definitely one to watch on, on uh, Sunday. You have other players like Jamie Brennan, your Jamie Brennan's as well. If Paddy McBrearty's back to full fitness, like he'd be a threat. Ocean Gallon as well. If Roy McHugh gets it out of the ball, he'd be very dangerous. So it's such an even game to call. It really is. Um, I think like Arma, that he is. It, it, I, I agree with Johnny's point here. It is very hard to know where they are after facing Fermanagh and down. This will be the game to show where they actually are. Like the league final, for me, I thought it was just disappointed that Armagh didn't actually go on and win that game, especially when Donegal were missing Roy McHugh and Paddy McBrearty. McBrearty and McHugh were there now, so this is a chance for Armagh to prove that the league final was a fluke, and this is a chance for them to go on and win the game. And Armagh haven't won those two titles since 2008. I know that's a, a stat that will go on and on in media circles, but it's just the fact that like, Armagh need to win an Ulster title, and this is a major opportunity to do it on Sunday as well. And um, yeah, like it's going to be a big game. It's going to be a tough one to call, but you could you could guarantee that this game is going to go down right down to the wire, down to the last minute, or it's going to go to extra time. It's either or. It's going to be a very entertaining game, and definitely looking forward to it on Sunday. Johnny, any more thoughts? Um. Probably one thing I could be maybe a wee bit concerned about uh, watching Donegal and and seeing McGuinness. McGuinness is a deadly man for for seeing opportunities and like like he did in the Derry game, he targeted the goalkeeper and you know the goalkeeper for Derry was there to be targeted, but it was only a matter of who could do come up with the right plan to do it. And McGuinness is very good at that. I would be a wee bit suspect of maybe the Armagh full back line. And I could be a bit worried in the fact it's the only it's the only area of the field I could be worried, and that's why I would go for a high press. Because I would be worried that Ashing Gallon's a serious baller and he's really stepping up. And I'd be worried with that high ball coming in on top of him. And it could cause a wee bit of bother in there, a wee bit of pandemonium. And you could be just unlucky enough to come out on the wrong side and concede a goal or two out of it. So it's just a weak concern I have, and, and that's why I'd like to see Greg back in there. I think he tightens up that whole defence, and it's a whole different ball game. Not that he's big or nothing, but he has everybody in the right place. And it's a matter of breakdown ball or whatever it is, and he come out with it. I think he's been playing that well this year. So I, I want to see him back. And probably the other point... There's a man that hasn't played any football this year and I don't really know where the hell he's went to. And by all accounts, I've seen, I seen he was on the match day panel there for the down game. Is Shane McParlin. And it'd be interesting to see could he be true into the mix at some stage in this in this Ulster final. Highly talented player, young lad, uh, can play around the middle, very aggressive, you know, can get scores. Come up with big goals last year as well. So it'd be interesting to see if he pops up somewhere along the line. It's just a thought. Just a thought that it, it could be something that could happen. But um, I agree with the lads. I think 
you know, I think we're going to know where we're at after this. You know, we're expected to be in also final. Now we're going to see if we learned that and from from last year on, on the league final. And I do think we're better in Donegal. And that's that's me just calling it straight. I think we're better. I think we just need to believe we're better and, and go and do the job. Yeah. It, just a point on Donegal there and their kick out. Whenever Derry did press them, you know, if a lot's been made about it that um, they totally exposed the keeper and they probably, you know, they probably did at least for one of the goals, but it was also Derry's lack of intensity and tracking back that was also exposed onto it. Armagh don't have to bring Blaine Hughes out into that role. Armagh have a big, especially with Rain O'Neill in there as well now, big Magan and 6-6, six, six, McGrugan, you know, they have a big physical imposing team and Donegal have maybe, McGee's a big lad, two or three players in their pitch and in their game and Gallon as well here over six foot. Armagh are literary players over six foot. If they go long, it should be Armagh's ball all day. But a point on that, Kevy, you know, the, the, the Derry goalkeeper was too far up the field. He just went to land the ball on top of his head. If he's coming out there as a as a full court press, he is there to mark space. He's not there to 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 to, to try and win ball in midfield. That it's a total. He, he he put himself in the wrong position for a start. That's just that's my point on. You know he he's there to come out and mark space till a certain point. You know so, but he's not there to contest ball in midfield. No, I agree with that. I agree with me. I think a better communication. I think for one of the goals, you know, Chrissy McKay got some goal. Chrissy McKay hadn't been so tight on him and just wondering where Oshin was. He could have been a bit of communication and says, Oh, I could have shout out to him and said, Drop you back, I'll pick up your man. That could have tightened the ship up a bit more. But Blaine Hughes hasn't really been playing that role as much as what Rafferty would have. You know, Rafferty last year would have not only went to Mark Ball, but if a ball came in, Rafferty would have plucked it. You know, there's a great picture of him plucking a ball last year. You don't want your keeper doing that. But as soon as the keeper goes into that role now, they will try and bombard that or else do what McGinnis did or what Donny Gall did was to load the say the keeper's on, try and expose a one-on-one out on the opposite wing. But I don't think Armagh will play into that game. I think Armagh probably have a big physical enough team to press up onto that. And if they did, I would like to see maybe... It'd be interesting you touched on Gallner um, to see whether Forker or somebody's maybe picked it as a man marker to drop back and pick him up. Um, you obviously have experience of playing cornerback, fullback in the past. Or do Armagh just laying out as their their blank six and just wonder about who picks up who whenever it comes to actually laying out name positions? But if, if they are to do a very good high press against Donegal, who will be used to running with the ball in here, not so good actually at shooting. And Donegal don't get a lot of return from their kickouts. But you touched on earlier on, Johnny, about um, Galway and how good they were at turnovers. Donegal are highly impressive at turnovers against Tyrone. That was the first time that they had more scores from their own kickout than they have had at turnovers this season. You know that that's the type of team that they are. They turn you over and then they go to counter attack. If Armagh were were to play a bit dumb and let the corner back have it and then press them, as opposed to pressing from the kickout itself to try and push a plus one in there, it may give Armagh a better advantage because Armagh do this brilliant. We well, it can be brilliant. Um, trap whereby they'll keep in one eye on the keeper. The ball going back to the keeper and they'll start to encourage the corner back to come out or ever has the bus the, the ball to come out and then wrap around him from the back so he has nowhere to go. And if they can do that, I think that's where you know, you almost give Arma give Donegal the ball and then do that wrap around and turn him over and say they're 21 or inside their own 45 anyway. I don't think it'll be an issue playing I don't think he'll come out into that position to be called out again. These are stuff's too too cute for that man. No, it's not gonna be an issue, right? Donegal is not gonna beat our man with that, no way. No. We've seen that. That was their, their. We've seen Donegal return to league form against Tyrone. Donegal returned to league form against Tyrone. Um, you can make up what you will. Tyrone maybe aren't the team that they have been in the past, but they lived up to their stats uh, in the last game, the last game against them. They got their setup wrong. They dropped off Donegal, and Donegal scored not eight from their own short kick out. That's, that's not Donegal. Donegal lucky to score four or five points a game from their own kick out. Donegal are used to turning teams over, dropping back, turning teams over whenever a team's pressing on them and then go on. So I, I could see, if Armagh looked at it properly, I could see them giving up a short kick out and then doing a press rather than trying to force the keeper to go long, especially if Patton's back. You know, you just can't take that risk of being caught out over the 45, which he will quite happily do. Oh, it's going to be tight, lads. It's going to be tight. Miss Kennedy, who gets the job done? 
I think Donegal will get it done. I do think Donegal will be there. I think that, that John Nice touch on Matthews touch on that last part at the end of the down game, that three minutes, three and a half minutes for the ball. Do you score from play is the freaky thing. Usually what happens there is that when you have a ball for a long, for a long period of time, you give away a free, and that's how you can see that teams don't score from play after three minutes of possession. They're 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 the can's teeth. But our match, Jason Duffy took a wonderful score from it, and I think it will boys have touched on it already. It will give them a wee bit more confidence and boost. But just don't go playing chicken and egg. Go out and get a three or four point lead and let Donegal chase you. <clears throat> Mr. Hurley. Gonna be a tough one to call. Um I'm gonna say Donegal slightly. I think McBrear team McHugh back at the team other than the league final. I think that's a big big difference for Donegal and they beat Armagh without them two boys there. So I think Donegal will win this title and Jim McGuinness will be boys to get this also title on his CV again. So yeah, I'm gonna go for Donegal in this one. Sorry, Johnny, there's not many votes in your corner here tonight, my man. Well, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look at the listen, Matthew's Matthew's right in what he's saying. Like, uh, that's the only thing I'm afraid of. What Matthew Honey just said there, the game comes down to the stretch, and it comes down to that who's going to cross the line. And you've and teams keep saying it. Do not let my priority get on that ball. Do not let him get swinging that boot. But somehow he always managed to get swinging that boot. And a big boot it is, you know, so we can't afford to let that happen. We really can't. And we I think it has to be done before that. And that's what I think is going to happen. I think I think Armagh by three or more. Mm. We will wait and see, lads. We will wait and see. Well, we're moving on to bigger and better things here now, lads. Dublin v Loud in Crow Park at quarter to two in the Leinster Senior Football Championship Final. Dublin going for their 14th Leinster in a row. Johnny Martin, this is a really fair competition. Let's keep persistent with it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I think uh, you are laughing, but I think Loud's going to give Dublin a serious go here. 20 minutes or two. No, I think Loud... <laughs> I think Come Loud's on, Johnny. Give, Come on. I'm telling you, I think, I think Loud's going to have a serious go at them here. Um, Jesus Christ. Loud's progr- Loud has progressed another wee bit. Another wee bit since Mickey Hart's gone. Um, I've been impressed with them. Listen, Dublin's a juggernaut. Like, I'm not saying, like, obvious, obvious reasons. Like, absolute juggernaut. But, like, Dublin's going to be in the middle of doing a right bit of hard training, getting themselves... Like Matthew alluded to earlier with Kerry, and the boy says about Kerry, you know, that the, the championship's really only starting for them. It's going to be the same with Dublin. And I think that this game, for a good while, I think Loud's going to have a serious cut off them. And I think it's going to be a decent game, to be honest. Both teams, listen, there's going to be excellent scores kicked by both teams. Loud there's a couple of players, you know, Mulroy, Downey, these boys all kick points. You know, born the a load of boys can kick good scores from distance. You know, they're well enough drilled. They're good, good at moving at angles. They're good at support play, coming on the run. I know it's it's a big step up. You know, but like, and we know the scores Dublin hits class and, as well, and in Crow Park and stuff like that. I think there's going to be great scores in this game. I think it'll be open enough at times. Um. Well, I think Loud. I think Loud will put it up to them for a good while. Yeah, that's, that's different fairs really. That's when you think about it. We're going to keep persistent with this, Mister Hurley. You know what? I will say this. I think the big winners on today in this final will be the Seals. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me no. up, why, why? <laughs> you know, I think the, you know the game will suit them. I just think the the open spaces and everything like that, it'll be just, you know, their, their living dream. So uh, it'll be a brilliant uh, occasion for them. Look, in all seriousness, Dublin hammered me by 16 points. I don't see how loud are getting any closer. Because in my eyes, me, they're the second best team in Leicester. So uh, that's my view, and I don't think loud. I do agree that John, what Johnny says, I do think there'll be good scores in the game. Sam and Roy will take a few. Mm. Kieran Downey, I'd imagine. Uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Burns has been in decent form this year, so is Kieran Grimes. They will take some nice scores. 
but Dublin will ramp up the gears, ramp it up, and then they'll hit low for. I wouldn't be surprised if Dublin score three or four goals in this final, like last season. I, I just think Dublin will rather than it a few times. There's an opportunity for them to press as well. The likes of Colin Basket, the likes of uh, Noel Scully, who who be on the edge in the fringe of the first team. There's a chance for them to uh, really impress Larkin O'Dell as well, um, who was in the under twenty panel, but he's going to be a main guy to try and get a starting spot. Ross, Ross McGarry as well, Karma Costello. So there is Dublin players that want to stake a name and I think they're going to do this this Sunday. I can't see anything other than Dublin winning this game by 10 plus. Mm, two sides of the coin there. It has to be said, Mr. Kennedy. I, I, would, I would trend, I would tend to lead towards Johnny in a way. You know, I, I would like to see, everybody would like to see a competitive game and I think looking at the Kildare and Loud game, the potential for Lewis to put in a, a better performance against Dublin than what Meath that is there because they were very narrow in their play. They took scores from distance. You know, um, Graham's hitting a wonderful score from a 45. They were confident in their play against Kildare. It looked like it was players led as opposed to being overcoached. I I think if Dublin, if Lloyd managed to keep Dublin out of the onion bag in the first half, this game will be a lot closer than what people think. I think 10 points is probably a good benchmark to even for Lloyd to set themselves up and say, look, if we keep within 10 points, it'll probably show some progression onto it as well. But Croke Park is different from anywhere else you play in because of the width and the size of it. Meath, for 20 minutes of that game, looked extremely competitive. Whenever the legs went to Meath, it was because they, they went so wide and tried to carry the ball out into the sidelines and run those channels. That game's almost gone. You know, that game is, is almost gone because of the way teams play a blanket defence now. You the, the middle channel is there and having watched the Loud and Kildare game back, Loud made brilliant use of that middle channel, going direct and taking scores from distance as well, even though at times there was another pass on. Graham scored a wonderful point in the in the um the second half, I think it was, whenever another pass out onto the wing to potentially be a, a bit closer in, a better angle, but he took a risk and he stuck a wonderful point over. They can take those shots and shoot with confidence. As long as the ball goes dead from those shots, they're in with the chance. Of putting in a serious performance. And then, you know, Lowe, for what Lowe is, they were in a Leinster final there last week um, at the under 20s. Things are going rightly in Lowe. They're another year up in Division um, 2. They'll stay up in there. Brandon's come in there. Um, you know, a bit of a bumpy start to as well. But if they're still in Division 2 again next year, I think they're the, the only team potentially um, for the next few years who could potentially challenge Dublin in, in Leinster. You know, I don't think. Um, you know, Kildare are a long way off it, even their under eight teams are a long way off it. Meath have got the win in there, but they've they've won it a few times now and haven't been able to produce a good answer. I just think it was a good buzz about Louth. I think Louth performance has improved and they will be looking for maybe not a result, but definitely a performance against Dublin. Yeah, the Jer Brennan factor going into Sunday, obviously he played with Dublin for many years, won two All Ireland's with the dubs, Johnny. Is that a factor going into this game this weekend at all at all at all? Yeah, look at Jer's a small factor, you know, Vincent's man, you know, very old fashioned, very cute. He know the Dublin setup inside out. He he know what to bring to the table. Um and the confidence that that's gonna give Loud as well, knowing that they've an insider there. Um you know, it'll it'll spoil them on at least. I mean they've a good game plan. You know, Kev's right, if they can keep the goals out at least for the first half, makes things very interesting. You know, 70 minutes is a long time, especially in Crow Park. And like I'm not I'm not here to say that it's gonna <laughs> gonna beat Dublin, but I think it's gonna be a brilliant game. I think Loud's Loud's gonna give a damn good show on themselves, that's what I think. And I think Brandon's gonna have them spot on. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I think uh, no point asking who's going to win that one game this weekend. That's probably a roundtable uh, vote on that. I think we'll all be saying the same thing. And then <clears throat> this weekend, that's the Total Cup gets underway this weekend. Good to see it back in action. A uh, very, very fair competition, as we said. And good to see it is back once again. In round one this weekend, you have Kildare against, Kildare against Longford in Hawkfield at 6 p.m. And of course, the game will be live on. GA Go, you have Leitrim against Waterford in Ballinamore at 6 pm. You have Sligo against Wexford in Markfitz Park at 3 pm. You have Fermanagh against Wicklow in Brewster Park at 3 pm. You have Down uh, v Limerick in Newry at 4 pm. And then you have Offaly v London 
in O'Connor Park at 2 p.m. All games are on Saturday. So the Talton Cup is back in action, Mr. Hurley. It's good to see it. It is, yeah. And uh, there's been two very good winners in the past two seasons, Westmead and, of course, um, in Mead. I'm sure yourself, John, was disappointed the first year of it, uh, losing the Westmead. That must have been a, a low kind of a moment for uh, for uh, the boys up in Cavan. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> like the, <laughs> had to put it in. But um, but like in fairness, it's a good competition for these sort sort of sides that aren't up at Sam McGuire level to show what they're made of. Like Sly in particular, I think looking at the fa- past few games, they got within two points of Galway, a Galway team that won the Connacht title that's still a potential in the locker. Sligo could be a dark horse for this. I do think Sligo are really good favourites for this. For Mana, if they take it seriously, I think they could be there, but they didn't take it seriously last year and you know what happened there. Kildare, like that group with Longford, Leitrim and Watford, it's almost like if you don't top that group, it's almost like what else can we do to help you? So like it's, Kildare have to top that group, there's no question. And I think Down should top that group easily in the next group after that. In terms of probably a dark horse, dark horse after them four sides, probably if you look at Wexford, the goals they're getting at the moment, um, awfully of good young players coming through, but the confidence they would have got would have been shattered by that defeat to Dublin and Crow Park. So um, maybe not. But we'll have to see in the next few weeks. Should be interesting uh, competition this year. Mr. Kennedy, on Sunday, you have more Tottenham Cup action in round one. You have Antrim against Tipperary in Carrigan Park at 2 p.m. and Leash against Carlow in Amore Park at 3 p.m. So lots and lots of Tottenham Cup action to look forward to this weekend. Antrim v Tipperary, Carrigan Park, 2 p.m. All eyes on that one on Sunday, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, um, Antrim still have a number of players out, but given that Tipperary were beat by Waterford um, in the, the Monster Championship this year, it sort of shows where the temporary football is at the minute. I would expect Antrim to win that game. Um, but it, it's a funny one Matthew's touched on there around about down and down win the group and Kildare win the group. For Kildare, if they don't win the Talton Cup, not even, you know, if they don't win the Talton Cup, it'll be a complete failure for them for uh, in a lot of people's eyes. And likewise, if down, don't down, you know, Conor Lockley's saying about that they feel like they should be up competing in the All Ireland series and the draw of Clare getting to the Munster final and if Down don't go on to win this now, you know, it's it's almost a failure for them as well. Sligo is another diagonal. Antrim, I think Antrim on reflection overperformed last year. I still think there's a lot of potential in Antrim um, to do well. They just don't have the players for it. Because of injuries, Adam Lockburn at the minute, who is a uh, He's probably closer to an Armagh footballer than is an Antrim football. He went to school in Armagh, so I think he's a home he's a, at least a one McCrory Cup. Um, but he's a cracking footballer and he sorely missed at number 11 this year, you know, sorely, sorely missed because the young lad is an absolute taunt. Um, you have Rory McCann is out. Um, big, big Rory McCann from um, Arthur Gallon as well. He done his appendix before the, the down game, which is why he couldn't play in it. So I think if Andrew, even if Andrew don't have those players back, there's probably enough to get them over the lane against Arma, against Tipperary. But they will need a few more of those players to come back if they are to do anything in the league or in the Touching Cup this year. If they're, I don't, I don't fancy them to progress the semi-final stage. All ten cup, great stuff, lads, great stuff. Well, a bit of predictions, a bit of the housekeeping to take care of before we get uh, off this pod. Johnny Murta, your player to watch this weekend and bet of the weekend. Yeah, bet of the weekend. Ugh, player to watch. Um, probably the old predictables, you know, with Armagh, I suppose, you have Rain and then you're Donegal, you have McBrady and you have McHugh at a serious game the last day. Uh, I'm going to go probably somebody left field um, this week, someone that could have a big game. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go Torbett. I think Torbett could have a big game this week. Um, some of the games he's maybe just hasn't seen enough ball in there, but he's he, he he's dangerous. I know I did pick him in the league and had a great game. I'm gonna go with Torbert. I think Torbo could have a big big say on on Armagh winning there the weekend. So go tip me hat to him. And um, I suppose the better the weekend, I'm gonna go uh, loud plus ten points. Oh, and that is definitely going to happen with Conor Turbo because Johnny knows his football with Armagh and it will happen. Always, 
Oh, always back that man. Uh, and Gamble responds to me, of course. Mr. Kennedy. Hang on, I'm going to, a geezer, if you're listening, start Arshin O'Neill. I'm going to put Arshin O'Neill <laughs> down as a man who's starting a corner forward. And... No, sir. So, so. <laughs> there we go. See, he knows everything. Get the money on. Get the money on. <laughs> well, even if he comes on, just watch him. <laughs> I think, you know, even if he comes on, this game's going to come down to the wire and those subs um, are going to come on. They're going to make a difference. You've seen, you know, Duffy coming on the last day, Adrian coming on the last day. Um, McConville, I think that Oshie McConville's one to watch when he comes off the bench and the impact he could have. Oshie. Yeah, Oshie O'Neill. Yeah. Oshie O'Neill, sorry. Oshie McConville. 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 Oshie McC Draw after extra time and Armada went on penalties. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they are practicing. I hope they're practicing. You want to put me through that, would you again? <laughs> there's, there's a boogie ring of me now. I'll lay you. <laughs> <laughs> we did hear from Johnny for a bit of month after the Dunstan final last year. Uh, Mr. Hurley. Uh, best of the week. I'm probably going to go for Carlo to beat Leash in the Talton Cup. There could be a potential shot there at uh, Derby. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go for that. Uh, player to watch, I'll for the senior level, I'll probably go for Darrow Beal for Donegal. I think they'll win the Ulster final, so I think he'll be key in uh, winning it. And uh, watch Noy for this weekend as well for the meet under 20s. Eamon Armstrong at wing back. Watch out for this guy um, on Saturday. They play against Kerry, so should be a good game. There we go. There we go. Well, lads, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgaretch.com. Use the program podcast to get 15% off on the website. It's coming to the crunch time. Get yourself organized on orgaretch.com. Former Armand Cross, Armand Cross, began footballer Johnny Morton, GA Sports Tracker app owner Kevin Kenny, and Gaelic Statsman Matthew Hurley. Thanks a million for joining me this week. Lads, have a great week. Thank you very much. Slanchet. Yeah, voice. Very much.